This is Lesson 2 for Continuing Students of the Dance of the Eye and the Hand. Today, we will look at a number of Chinese landscapes and see if we can find which distances are hidden within them. We will also create a landscape to demonstrate distance in height. So in this lesson, we're going to continue working with the three distances, which is one piece of Chinese painting theory. The complete piece tells us there's distance in uh, height, distance in depth, and distance at the same level. And today we are going to work with distance in height, and we will create a simple landscape demonstrating that concept of uh, height in a Chinese landscape. So let's begin. We'll start by looking at a Chinese landscape. What do you see? How do you train your eye? What is being shown in this landscape? Is it height? Is it depth? Is it the same level? Take a few moments and study it. Take it apart. How does your eye move through it? How is the artist establishing where you are and where the landscape is? How does the landscape move? Here's another. Take a moment. Look at the composition. Are you establishing height, depth, or the same level? And one more. You can see that some compositions are much more complicated than others. Some are more simple. Some involve just one concept, whether it's depth or height or same level. Some are combining multiple concepts. What do you see in this image? Here is the model we'll be working with this week. In a singular form, it's demonstrating distance in height. So to begin, we'll start by loading our brush We will be using pretty exclusively just solid black ink today, although if you want to add a level of complexity to it, you could do some grays as you increase in the height. And we're going to start in the foreground here. We're basically building one uh, uh, collection of, of rocks into a mountain. Uh, there will be a little bit of a waterfalls, but we'll start in the foreground here. We're, um, I'm still using a calligraphy grasp on my brush, but I'm doing landscape. I can use much more of the side of the brush and from any angle. I'm doing primarily rock lines, mountain lines, so these have a uh, depth or a thickness and a texture to them. Um, I want to start here, bring this one down. I can do them in sections. I can run off the um, bottom of my sheet, which also adds more uh, height to the composition. And I'm just building upward as I go. And some of these are uh, larger rocks nestled uh, between smaller ones or smaller ones nestled among larger ones. Uh, the composition works from combining both the large and the small. just uh, working my way up 
this mountain. Now, in thinking about the three distances, um, most paintings are some combination of the three distances. Uh, it's uh, a little bit of a challenge to find one that is purely singularly just height. Generally, height and depth get used together. So at the core of this, we have this nice little clustering of smaller rocks creating the composition. And then down on this side we have, we're going to have this waterfall coming through, so we want to make a uh, secondary bank in which that waterfall can flow. Pick up a little more ink here. then continue at the top to finish our peak. So that's our basic structure. Now we'll add some shading lines to that. Uh, if you wanted to uh, add a little more variation, you might change your brush to uh, a little greater, greater wash, which would add a little more complexity. So inside this structure, I'm going to add some shading lines. Again, not using working from the point, but using more of the side of the brush as I go. And um, as a general guidance, shading lines are um, more often done uh, from sort of above a particular outline and cutting to uh, butting up against the outline below it, which will give us uh, some depth in term and as well as some height. But on this piece, we're primarily focused on height and adding some shading lines as we go to further define the composition. And sometimes the shading lines can be thought of like if you're thinking you're painting water coming down, they have a fluidity to it uh, and help draw the eye 
from the top down. And again, I'm working primarily on the outside or upper side of these outlines to put this shading in, often closing off any holes that might leak energy. And the brush has uh, not a lot of liquid in it, so it can be a fairly dry stroke. And then the last um, piece I will do will be adding some water to the waterfall. And so this will start up here and is just um, almost more like a stream coming down. falling again, quite some distance, and then once again, and this time it changes directions, and then I can go back in and uh, add a little more shading to further highlight the path of that water. I'm going to add a few dots. Um, I'm going to go back to the black for that. Dots are a um, uh, more than a decoration, but they add energy. And so you want to do them with some energy. You're not just placing a dot, but you're punctuating it. So I think of you're adding uh, exclamation points. This further adds to the energy of the piece. It also is a way if your line work was not as strong, you can uh, improve on it, strengthen it, find weak areas, places where maybe the stroke is not as strong as you intended it to be, to uh, add that one more extra pulse of energy. Um, so now we need to look at our composition and see where do we want to put the inscription. This would be a place, we could also put it over here. Uh, but here I want to keep that openness to accentuate the height. I don't want to close that off. So I'll look at putting my inscription here, my two characters for distance and height, and my date and my name. So I've switched to a detailed brush and I'll start with the inscription, the character for height. This was on our model last week. If you want to refer back to last week's model for the 
model of this and the stroke order. And then the character for distance, starting on the right side again. The left side is the uh, walking radical. We always do that last, down to left, vertical, pair of dots, and then one, two, three dots. The fourth dot then is connected to a wave. Wave is strong. You think of it as a straight line. If you may think of it as a curved line, it'll be too weak. So we have distance in height, and then our date, 2020. Zero, two zero is our year, and it is currently the sixth month. And then to complete it, add my signature. And now I have a complete piece, inscription, date, name, and I have enough room here to put a small chop and my piece is done. Before you go, one last note. The handouts for the dance of the eye and the hand for beginning students and continuing students, all lessons, are posted as downloadable PDFs at www.laughingwatersstudio.com. Have a good day. You have been watching Distance Learning from Laughing Waters Studio.